This is the Infrastructure Matters Podcast, brought to you by the Futurum Group. We explore the latest developments in hybrid cloud computing and the technology that underpins it. In each episode, we'll dive deep into the latest trends and technologies that are shaping the hybrid cloud computing landscape. The Infrastructure Matters podcast is for information and entertainment purposes only. Please do not take anything reflected in this show as investment advice. Now your co-hosts, Stephen Dickens, Kimberly Bates, and Krista Maycumber of the Futurum Group. Hello and welcome to another episode of Infrastructure Matters and we're live at KubeCon. I'm joined by my fantastic co-host, Camberley Bates. Hey Camberley, welcome to the show. Are you brain dead yet from this last two days? <laughs> I'm running on fumes. You look better with it than I do, but <laughs> it's it's been action packed. It has been big. Um, what are they, 10,000 people? You know, I didn't ask the question, but yeah, I feel that's it's, what I've it's, heard. It, it, that's what you I haven't asked the question, which Smaller is more than Amsterdam, but still huge. But I think. we knew that. It's like almost that's, I think Detroit last year was six, maybe. So they're trending up for well, sure. Well, it was Detroit versus Chicago, might be part of that. I don't think so, though. I'm not I think it's more. There. You're not going to go I'm there. Okay, sorry, Detroit. I, d- I didn't mean to <laughs> apologize to them. Yeah, so, so you guys that are tuning in, um, they, b- before we get here, these guys, the guys that run the a- analyst um, relationships with KubeCon and CNCF, sent us a long email with all the announcements, pages and pages of the announcements that yeah. came out today. Or it lasts Every two days. vendor's been hitting it hard. I've got like multiple research notes coming out. There's ones on Red Hat that I've put together. We've got stuff coming out on SUSE. There's just been a whole lot. bunch. So a couple of them that I'm going to highlight here, and I have notes here, guys, because there's no way that I can remember all of this stuff going on. Um, NetApp Astra Control. Yeah. Uh, immutable backups, and also one of the things they've done is enable um, something called uh, this is this is how techy this place is, guys. It's um, on tap queue trees, which is basically when you have a large number of persistent volumes, um, you're going to run out of space. Yeah. So this is their way of accommodating to that. Another big one was from Red Hat. Well, let's just stay on NetApp before we jump vendor. We had a really fantastic briefing on the observability stuff. Yes. I thought Miles did a great job, mm-hmm. really fantastic. What were your takeaways from that? What did you see? Well, this is something I've been talking to other people about is that there's a lot of observability offerings on the floor. I think I, I had mean, five briefings yeah. yesterday on observability alone. Can you tell them apart? They were merging by the end of the day. I'll give, me, I'll give myself that. There were some, the, the guys from Sensor stood out for me with eBPF. That that was an interesting mm-hmm. smaller Series B. But I think from an overall observability space, all starting to trend towards the same space. The service now briefing I had, obviously a slightly different angle from a service impact point of view that aligns mm-hmm. with where they are. But we've been briefed by Dynatrace. We've had Datadog. You know. I also spent some time on the Elastic booth. so But I think Mars did a great job going back to NetApp at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. He, he had kind of the worst time slot. We were within, what was it, 5.30 mm-hmm. yesterday evening. But he did a fantastic job. So, so taking another <laughs> branch on this one to build on that, what we're seeing here, and to me the big message here is we are definitely over the chasm from Kubernetes adoption in the enterprise. That, yeah, that's sure. some, we passed that someplace this year. Last year we saw the on upcoming of platform engineers and that's even more taken up this year. We're going to deep dive on that. Right. But this unobservability is part of that piece of it. Yeah, definitely. Is the, th- those guys coming into place. So, definitely. So let me go into the, some of the others. Red Hat, um, you now have, okay, so what you would expect, they now have capabilities of their VM capability being supported on Rosa, which is their offering that's up in the, in the cloud. The other thing they rolled out in GA is their micro shift, which is the K3S at the edge kind of device. So I've got a research note. We'll put that in the show notes on that. Okay. 
Um, Veeam brought out, and so of course you guys know from me, you know, it's a lot of data stuff. Veeam brought out their ransomware protection um, and some integration with Datadog, which is for the audit logs, the observability, yeah, yeah. that kind sense. of stuff. Um, they also announced some areas around that they've continued this march on the federal capabilities, which is, um, you know, they've got the SBOM going on, which is the, the software bill of materials kind yep. of stuff that they had to release and that kind of thing. Dell announced last week the GA of their Apex cloud platform for Red Hat, yeah. which is a big deal. Where So we're seeing quite a few companies having these platforms that are running Red Hat OpenShift. Um, that's part of the, what we're going to talk about in the platform engineering piece of it. Um, KubeCon or CNCF, you know, focus on their projects out there. There's multiple ones that graduated this year. Two of them that I think are really important for audience is Istio, which is the service mesh people are well known in the market. Um, the other one that got launched is um, um, Kata, which is um, sort of orchestration kind of work. Um, we're also, Argo came out, which that was last year, so I don't need to highlight that one. But anyway, so those are kind of some of the things that were happening. Yeah, I got to spend some time walking around the sort of where the, all the projects are hosted on the floor. There's a real buzz there, I think. You spend, I just spend an hour just walking up and mm -hmm. down. There's kind of three or four aisles, small booths, really excited kind of community type mm -hmm. support. I think the CNCF do a good job. You've got the big vendors, you've got IBM, you've got VMware, you've got NetApp. But I think there's still a community feel to this. I spent some time with uh, with Cast AI and with Sensor. Mm -hmm. They've just made Series B um, funding rounds, and they announced those this week. So I think you've got everything from kind of open source projects. Mm -hmm. You've got sort of Series A, Series B type companies, right up to some of the bigger players, the IBMs, the Red Hats, the VMwares, the NetApps. So there's a there's a kind of real. I, I'm, I'm enjoying these shows. I think we're starting to see the overall space mature, but there's still a community feel to it. It reminds me of VMworld 10 years ago or more. Yeah. Because VMworld was just, or VMware was just coming up where everybody, this, all, this thing called server virtualization was just taking off and there was no real support around anything else, but then all the community or different software offerings started coming out. Um, and you know, frankly, you know, that's where Veeam came from, right? They, yeah. they latched themselves onto there, and there's a bunch of other kind of folks that are coming there. And they, you know, that became a conference. That was the conference you needed to be at. Yeah. Um, KubeCon is getting there. Yeah, I mean, a, like that, AWS sure. is where everybody shows up, reinvent. But you know, KubeCon is definitely becoming a place where, if you're into infrastructure systems and de developer kind of thing, this is where you show up. So you and I have done a whole bunch of briefings. I haven't looked in my calendar, but I'm probably 12, 15 mm -hmm. over the last couple of days. What have been the things that have come away from you? You know, maybe vendor specific, but also just kind of broader themes. So the big- We'll get back to platform engineering, but you know, what are some of those other themes? Well, that's, that's where I'm gonna get to, is that yeah, yeah. platform engineering piece of it, because the big theme coming out of here is we're getting to the place, and that's where I was talking about, is getting over to the chasm, getting to a maturity level, and you know, three big things, resiliency, security, and complexity. So mm -hmm. things are too complex. Yeah, for sure. Um, and if you have 175 projects, you're trying to put these all together, how do you select what you have? So you're seeing people migrate to stacks, and so play people like OpenShift um, become more in a managed environment. Rancher is a you know can be a is a area that's kind of curated. You also have like Newtonic shipping theirs. You have um, Dell shipping theirs, and you know IBM Fusion shipping theirs, and just starting to get their Fusion product out. You know, so all these companies have got these stacks there, and part of that is trying to address some of these issues of that complexity. But it's got to be more than that. That's not enough. Yeah, it's interesting. That I think the two words, and I tweeted it earlier on in the week opinionated and curated yes i think you know we've been in a few briefings together those have been common themes for mm -hmm. me throughout all of the discussions people have been looking at this and there's whilst the kubernetes space you can do everything you can go get code from everywhere and you can sort of deploy all this stuff i think enterprises are now at the stage of okay this has gone from being a lab project i'm now starting to put <laughs> a production workload on this the non-functional requirements. We were in a conversation with IBM and those non-functional requirements. Mm -hmm. 
you know, performance, availability, scalability, security, or focused on operations, focused on FinOps, uh, you know, I had a really good meeting with, as I've mentioned, the CAST guys around kind of tuning Kubernetes clusters from a cost perspective. We've got the trains going by, <laughs> we're in Chicago, it's kind of trains everywhere, so we'll just keep rolling. But I mean, I think for me, it was just the case of we're starting to see this place mature. I had spent some time with Peter Smales, who runs the um, Suse Rancher. Rang Rancher. Thank you. There we go. Spit help it me out. out. Um, <laughs> help me out. It's been a long few days, but no. I mean, we talked about just this whole space maturing. I think there's a whole kind of the grown-ups are starting to get in the room. Mm -hmm. it, so whilst there's some spiky hair and different hair colours and big earrings and lots of different T-shirts we're starting to see this whole space start to mature. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that brings us on to our main topic, platform engineering. Maybe just frame that up for the watchers and listeners just to get us started. So if you, you have, we've always had this thing called DevOps. And before recently, Dev and Ops were one thing. And somebody within the development team usually took some sort of an operation position. Mm -hmm. And then at some point in time, those ops people kind of started spinning off for a little bit and just focusing on just the operations of the piece of it. Um, and that was probably two years ago. Mm -hmm. We saw that where that was um, when I was hosting some panels and talking about where we're going with that. We're now at the place where you have this platform engineering showing up, where we had that big conversation in Detroit was about platform engineering and and, and Google was like scratching their head and like, well, they weren't scratching their head, but they're going, guys, we've been doing this forever. Yeah. You know, we, With we, their SRE teams. And well, you know, they invented the Kubernetes, right? Yeah. So they've been doing platform engineering all along. So for some reason, DevOps was doing what there is because, you know, it's kind of like when we all started, when, a long time ago when people got PCs, it was kind of like, you know, the back office or the, or the individuals having their own computers. And um, so they're having free for all kind of things. So now we're going to the point that you've got applications that are coming to the point that they're mature and we're maturing to the point that you have to have resiliency you, and security, which is another issue. So yeah, I mean, that's been the key thing. I mean, as I've got all these observability briefings, you know, it's been coming through pipeline security. I mean, the big theme has been post solar winds kind of pipeline security. Mm -hmm. So where you were talking about the dev piece, ensuring that sort of CICD pipeline security, can I make sure that I can attestate all the code as it comes through? You know, can I observe all of these platforms? I met with a vendor um, today going right down to the developer laptop from a security perspective, because that's where it starts. That's where they're mm -hmm. downloading the code onto their laptop. You know, doing the pulls from GitHub and, you know, various things to kind of build that out. So I think it's fascinating for me. With, I mean, I kind of equate the whole platform engineering sort of movement with just this space maturing. Mm -hmm. Do you see the same? Yeah. Actually, Chris Weiberg, um, who is with Veritas, uh, keynoted today and, and Veritas is <laughs> sponsoring. Somebody was going, why is Veritas sponsoring? Well, it's because of this, this kind of thing. They're going to be able to back it up, right? Well, it's not just backing up. It's more the resiliency yeah. is what they're really focused on. There's resiliency and high availability. But part of the thing you look at is, as he mentioned, is saying we are very, last year, um, Linux Foundation was part and parcel working with the Biden administration on this open source code problem. Yeah. And what does software bill of materials really the mean? Supply chain. Supply chain, the whole nine yards. So one of the things that Chris was talking about is Kubernetes being open source is prime for, or any of the open source products are op is prime for being busted into and then shifting to another place within the data center. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you, as you said, you know, you've, got, you've got a big problem. You've got open doors going on and people are, there is concern about that. So that's why we're having all these disciplines putting around this is because if you didn't see it, I don't know if you saw, you know, the SEC <laughs> basically telling the SolarWinds executives, we're yeah, we, you've you, got to start to declare those. I saw well, that no, 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 they're, they're, they're prosecuting them yeah. for crime. I mean, the SEC thing. I mean, it's just it's like that. I saw the SEC piece around they're going to make executives responsible for this. Yeah. I hadn't seen the SolarWinds so, yeah, piece. Yeah, it's frightening. I mean, if you read that press release, it's frightening. 
And any CEO, any CISO, any CIO needs to be, you know, because this, when they looked at, got the emails and that kind of stuff, yeah, these people knew that they were exposures. We don't need more fear, no. uncertainty, and doubt, but I think we're going to get no. some. So now they're, you know, so now you're saying, okay, so let's put the security on here. So especially since it's open source, that we have an understanding about where this is, where it's coming from, you know, root of trust, you know the trust kind of situation that we have. Well, I think I've certainly taken away that this space is thinking about it. They're starting to deploy. We've now got f fire engines going past. <laughs> it's Chicago, we, there you, we go. You can tell we're filming in the Windy City, right? Um, you're going to love this. The same guys <laughs> just sort of off camera here going insane, but we'll just keep rolling through it. But no, I mean, I think, uh, you know, we're talking about security and the police are going to turn up. But no, I mean, all seriousness, we've been tracking, we've been both in this space for long enough. My first Linux con was 2015. You know, if you look at where this space is, it's matured massively. Mm -hmm. I think we're still not all the way there. No. But I think directionally, I'm starting to see this space be prime time now for mission critical applications. Yeah. And we're, st you know, whilst we've seen some of these at scale, I think it's now ready to get into the point of enterprise adoption. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah, um, and you're starting to listen to the, some of the people. You know, there. I mean, there's some companies that are completely built on this open source commitment. If you looked at some of the exec, these big companies that have sponsored or part of the sponsorships of CNCF, you know, today, you know, Discover's on the stage, Intuit's on the stage. They've the Discover. They've got their own booth. Boeing has been here. Yeah. And part of that, somebody was saying, well, why would they even have their own booth here? What, what's the purpose of these people being here? And I was trying to explain to them, you have this very large, a fairly sizable community that's mm -hmm. part of CNCF. They are vested in open source. They have built their environment and their development on open source. So if you're going to be part of this community, you can't just use. You got to show up. And you you gotta show contribute. up and you got to contribute. So you look at. And it's a great recruiting environment. So they're trying to get skilled yeah. engineers. That they're all walking. It's ten thousand of them walking yeah. around. They're going to see Discover contributing, giving back, putting marketing dollars, putting dollars into the community, and they're going to go. Hey, I'm going to work for these guys. Right, and well, Spotify is this year is the biggest contributor. Yeah. Yeah, because they've dump, dumped a whole bunch of stuff into contribution and development. So it's here. not just the so, vendors; it's the end users as well. Yeah. And then when you see Oracle showing up, you can tell. Now it's you real. know <laughs> it's real. Yeah, I, I, I had exactly the same. St I'm kind of walking through the boots. I'm like, okay, this got real. I mean, Oracle's got some bona fides in open source to their credit with what they've been Java. doing with yeah. what they've been doing with Java, what they've been doing with Oracle Autonomous My Linux. SQL. Yeah, so they've got some bona fides, but as you say, when they've got a booth, you're like, ah, this is real. Yeah, yeah, he's, Larry Ellison is not exactly known for giving things away. Yeah, well, it's been fantastic to film in person. This has been an episode of Infrastructure Matters. Please check the research notes in the show notes below, and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Mm -hmm.